Hey everybody, Dr. Nelson here. Uh, this is a video about the commutative property of addition. So for the first few pages, you're going to take notes with me, and then you have a chance to pause the video and try some problems on your own, and then at the end you can see how you did. Alright, so what exactly is the commutative property of addition? Well, maybe you've heard the word commute before, where someone might commute to work and back. Uh, well, the word commutative, I want you to think of, is also associated with the, with the word switch. So let's write the word switch. Or move. Because this property has something to do with moving around numbers. All right. So the first type of commutative property is the commutative property of addition. And here's the rule right here. It states, okay, when adding two numbers, the order in which the two numbers are added does not change the sum. All right. So here's an example. Let's say, for example, we have the number 6 plus 4. All right. Well, we know that number 6 plus 4 equals 10, right? So that's the same as if we switch the numbers around, which would be 4 plus 6. All right. Another example could be if, say, we're adding uh, fractions. Let's say 2 thirds plus 5 sevenths. Well, that's the same as adding 5 sevenths plus two thirds. And when all we're doing is adding, you're allowed to move the numbers around like this, all right? So why learn this, okay? This property will actually save you time. So let's say saves time. And let me give you an example, okay? Let's say for example, we have uh, the numbers say 99 plus 64 plus one, all right? Now, according to order of operations, we would have to do 99 plus 64, get that number, okay, and then add 1. All right, maybe you can do it in your head pretty quick. But it would be actually faster if we could add 99 and 1 first together, right, that's 100, and then add the 64. So I can actually switch around the 64 and the 1. So let me change the order. So it's going to be 99 plus 1 plus 64. Now we can simply add 99 and 1, which is 100, plus 64. And we get our final answer of 164. All right. So the commutative property of addition gives you the power to move numbers around. All right. Now this is really important. I want you to put a big star right here. Okay. The commutative property of addition is for only addition. Let's write down only addition. Here's an example of a problem where you could not move things around. Say if I said uh, eight divided by two plus four. Okay. What we couldn't do is move the 4 around or the 8 around, all right? because now if this was, if the division sign was only a plus, then we certainly could move it around, all right? but because we have a division sign in there, that's that. All right, so let's turn the page and let's talk now about the commutative property of multiplication, all right? And this is very similar to the commutative property of addition, except, all right, the rule states that the factors can be multiplied in any order and the product remains the same. That's the rule, okay? So an example of this would be uh, five times three times two equals, okay? How about five times two times three? So what I did is I moved around the, the three and, and the two, okay? Another example could be say uh, one fourth times nine fifths times three fourths. And because all we're doing is multiplying, I can move the numbers around. I could say this is the same as 3 fourths times 1 fourth times 9 fifths. All right. So again, why I learned this? Well, it's the exact same reason as the commutative property of addition. It saves time. And let me give you an example. Okay. Let's say, for example, we have uh, the problem, say, 3 fourths times nine-fifths times four-thirds, okay? Now, I could do three-fourths times nine-fifths and get that number, okay? And then times it by four-thirds. But multiplying three-fourths and four-thirds actually would be a lot easier, right? Because three-fourths times four-thirds is actually one. So I'm going to change the order around. So it's going to be three-fourths times four-thirds times nine-fifths. And I know that 3 fourths times 4 thirds is 1, all right? And so, and then now 1 times 9 fifths gives us our answer of 9 fifths. I'm going to write it over here. It's a little messy, but it's okay. 
nine fifths, and that's it. All right. So when you have the ability to move numbers around, it saves you time. Okay. And again, this is really important. The commutative property of multiplication is for only for multiplying. Okay. So only multiplying. All right. You can't mix it up with other operations. So, all right. So an example when this would not work would be something like say six times four plus two. All right. Because we have a multiplication and addition, okay, it just would not work. All right. All right. So let's turn the page for the last part of this. And what we're going to do is we're going to identify, okay, the equations that um, are examples of the commutative property of addition and also the commutative property of multiplication. So it says circle the examples of the commutative property of addition and then box in the examples of the commutative property of multiplication. All right, so here we have five plus eight equals eight plus five. Well notice the five and the eights are switching around, right? So that is a good example of the commutative property of addition. So this is a, we're gonna circle that one. Here we have negative four plus seven equals negative four plus seven. Now notice the order did not change, right? Okay, so that's neither one, so we're gonna leave that one blank. Two times three equals three times two. Well, the order switched around, right? It's only multiplication. So this one is the commutative property of multiplication. So let's box that in. Here we have negative four times two equals two times negative four. And again, the order switched around, so that's the commutative property of multiplication. Next one, one times two times three equals three times two times one. Uh, looks like the numbers moved around a little bit. Okay, so this is the commutative property of multiplication. Now here we have eight minus four equals four minus eight. And notice the operation signs are subtraction, right? So that's gonna be neither the commutative property of addition or the commutative property of multiplication. All right, three more. Negative nine plus 12 equals 12 plus negative nine. And notice we're adding and the numbers are switched around. So this is the commutative property of addition. Here we have 12 minus four equals four minus 12. Well notice the numbers did switch around, right? But we're talking about subtraction. So this is neither one. And then finally eight divided by four equals four divided by eight. And again, the numbers did switch around but we're talking about division, right? And there's no such thing as the commutative property of division. So we're gonna leave that one blank as well. All right, so now that you understand a little more about the commutative property, why don't you pause the video and try the your turn now problems. And when you're done, hit play. You can see how you did. All right, good luck. All right, welcome back. Let's say I do with these practice problems. So you had the circle of the examples of the commutative property of addition and then you had to box in the examples of the commutative property of multiplication. Well, the first one we have is seven plus 11 equals seven plus 11. And notice these expressions are exactly the same. Nothing changed, right? So this is neither. Here we have negative two plus five equals five plus negative two. And this certainly is an example of the commutative property of addition. All right, here we have two times negative eight equals negative eight times two. Uh, again, they switch around, so this is the commutative property of multiplication. Here we have eight minus four equals four minus eight. And remember, there's no such thing as the commutative property of subtraction, right? So that's neither one. Here we have negative 13 times eight equals eight times negative 13. And that's the commutative property of multiplication. Here we have 100 uh, minus 40 equals 40 minus 100, and that's neither. And then we have 15 divided by three equals three divided by 15, and that's neither as well. All right, so there was two examples of the community property of multiplication and one example of the community property of addition. All right, how'd you do?